Mrs May does come back with some sort of legal codicil to the withdrawal treaty. Would that be enough for you? No, it wouldn't, and she'd be very foolish to go down that road because she knows she has heard the debates in the House of Commons, she has read the public comments that have been made, and she has listened to the private conversations we and others have had with her, and she knows that that will not be sufficient, that the agreement has to be reopened, the backstop has to be removed, and it has to be replaced with something which the EU already are saying could be done anyhow. And we're saying to her, if the EU are saying in the event of a no deal, we can avoid a hard border on the island of Ireland between Northern Ireland and the Irish Republic, then push them on the methods which they have said they're going to use and have those put into an agreement and we can all move forward. But let's just be clear, is that the position of the DUP? Because when your leader Arlene Foster was interviewed this morning, she did not close the door to the option of having some sort of legal addendum or legal codicil to the withdrawal treaty. Well, I, mean, I didn't hear the interview and I mean, the context of all of these things are important. I can tell you what the party's public private view is on this, and that is that the withdrawal agreement, which is legally binding, cannot be in any way watered down by some letter which says that oh, we don't intend this to be forever or whatever. The important thing is it will be an internationally binding agreement with which on almost every page says that there will be obligations and duties that the, the British government will have to implement in the event of the backstop having to be introduced and that will not be. Uh, uh, done away with by any legal letter. Well, we heard from the chairman of the Northern Ireland Select Committee in the last hour, Andrew Morrison, who said if you had a uh, attachment, addendum to the withdrawal treaty, which was justiciable, in other words, which could be pursued in court, even though it was not in the withdrawal treaty, that should be sufficient. Well, you know, again, uh, the outcome of any court decision... In, uh, most of these legal documents will always be open to interpretation. The one thing which will not be open to interpretation is the legally binding, internationally signed uh, agreement, uh, the withdrawal agreement. That will, that, that there's, there's no uh, ambiguity there, there's no grey areas, it's black and white, and that's the bit that has to be changed. If Mrs May, however, does go down that road, and if, and I grant you it's a big if, Parliament approves it, where does that leave the DUP and your agreement with the government? Well, I mean, first of all, I think it would be very foolish to come back to Parliament with an agreement which is similar to uh, the one which was turned down by 230 of a majority uh, less than three weeks ago. Um, so I think that she's got to contemplate that. But secondly, even if she did get it through the House of Commons, she then has to introduce legislation to implement it. She will not have our support for that implementation. She'll not have the support of many of her own back Backbenchers. And I suspect if even she got a one-off vote from the Labour Party, they'll not be walking through the lobbies week after week, amendment after amendment, to get a withdrawal agreement through for this government. So she's got to contemplate uh, what is the road ahead if she decides to go down that route. And I think that once she thinks of that, then she'll see that really there's no alternative but to do what she has promised now to do, and that is to go have this agreement um, reopened and have the backstop removed. So, from your point of view, the DUP's position is not you must rework the backstop, the backstop has to be axed, scrapped, removed, full stop. Yes, it has to be, and I mean, there are a number of reasons for that, because the backstop is really designed to keep the United Kingdom as a whole in the customs union and the single market. That does not honour either her own manifesto or the um, outcome of the referendum. Sammy Olson, thanks.